All right. Um, so, right. So, we're, um, so today we're going to be talking about uh, JDBC as a, um, um, a a library. It's a Java library that allows us to integrate with various um, various databases. Right. Yes. Yep. It's a J, uh, Java database connectivity. Right. And uh, it's a um, uh, it uh, it attempted well that's what the, the the intent of JDBC is to do what Java did for programming languages um, well for operating systems um, it's trying to do what J, what uh, what the what Java did for the operating system that what uh, um, it's doing it for the databases right uh, so Java Java's um, selling point was that. Uh, you program once and you run everywhere, right? That's that's the motto. Uh, that uh, you have a virtual machine uh, and you uh, program to that virtual machine, and then it becomes uh, irrelevant where does that uh, code actually executes, as long as you have a JVM for that particular operating system. Uh, so JDBC is attempting to do the same thing, uh, so that um, uh, it abstracts the uh, the database vendors. Uh, so that as long as you code uh, to this standard, the JDBC standard, uh, it doesn't really matter what vendor you run it on. Right? It doesn't matter if it's MySQL, Oracle, uh, SQL Server. Right? As long as you have, the, you have a JDBC driver, uh, that is the virtual machine. Right? You code to that standard, and you sh you presumably you should be able to swap uh, between the various vendors uh, without having to change your source code. Okay. Uh, it's a very powerful idea. Uh, it mostly works. Um, each, uh, each vendor that supports JDBC provides libraries uh, that uh, you uh, include into your uh, source code uh, so that you can now um, inter in, um, interface with, uh, with, those, uh, uh, with that database uh, without actually knowing, having to know that it is that particular, that particular vendor. Right. For instance, we're going to be using MySQL, but nowhere will you see, in, at least in the source code, uh, you won't see anything that has to do with MySQL. Right. It's all down abstracted uh, uh, from you uh, by the uh, library. Okay. Uh, yeah. So, uh, um, so first of all, you'll uh, uh, you'll need to obviously install a MySQL um, a database, which I assume you all already have. Um, once you have it running on your machine uh, and you want to be able to connect to it uh, through Java, uh, you'll need to download the, um, the library that allows your Java source code to connect to MySQL uh, database. Uh, you can go and download it for free at devmysql.com downloads connector. Okay, and uh, this is the, the download page. If you scroll down a little bit further, right, they'll, you'll have a um, uh, capability of downloading a platform independent. Right? We want platform independent. This is Java. Java is platform independent uh, version. Right? Uh, you'll download that and you need to copy the jar file in some specific strategic places uh, depending on your operating system. Um, in a, a typical place to put it, in, a, in it doesn't really matter where you put it as long as you know where it is, uh, but a very common place to put it a, on, uh, on Linux or Unix or Mac OS uh, is under user local lib. Right? So that's where I put it. Uh, again, it doesn't really matter where you put it as long as you know where it is. Right? You, so you, need, you can reference it. Okay? Uh, so there it is. So I, I copied it and, and pasted it in uh, there. Very easy. Yes? It's just one, it was, it's a jar file. Um, all right. Then um, we're going to be using Tomcat. As our uh, middle tier, right? It's a it's a um, it's a reference implementation of the J2EE uh, infrastructure, right? The uh, that's a, a Java um, Enterprise Edition uh, that uh, uh, allows you to um, uh, use a lot of the enterprise level uh, architecture and services uh, that uh, Java provides, right? Uh, including JDBC, uh, including JNDI. Um, uh, all the uh, the routing, the um, um, the queuing mechanisms, uh, the uh, publish and subscribe, uh, security measures, all all sorts of uh, 
uh, you know, enterprise level uh, libraries, you know, um, uh, entity beans and whatnot. Uh, so, so yeah, it's, again, it's, it's free. Uh, so uh, you can download it from tomcatapache.org. Uh, as of this recording, it is Tomcat 9 is the latest. Uh, so you can go and uh, download that uh, from download9.cgi. If you scroll down a little bit, uh, there will be a, um, uh, you can download it for various uh, infrastructures. I downloaded uh, the zip file from the core here. So right here from the core. Uh, and uh, it's a, uh, and when you, when you explode the, when you un unzip the, uh, the, the, uh, the file, it will be several directories in there. And, and again, it doesn't really matter where you put it as long as you know where it is. Uh, um, in, on PC, perhaps, you can put it on program files. Uh, I, here on, on Mac OS, I install it under slash user slash local. Okay, uh, so there it is. So Apache, I guess you can't see it somewhere in there. Wow, it's slow. Ah, put it back. Anyway. Um, also, uh, once you install um, Tomcat, uh, Tomcat is one of it w is is through which we're going to connect to the database, right? It is Tomcat who is going to create a connection for us, right? There's two different ways of connecting to to to, uh, to the database. You can either connect directly from your Java code, right, uh, where you you connect to the, to the server, you ask the server for for through the SQL server. Uh, you, you ask for a database connection, and now you have a live connection to the database, and you can now exchange um, SQL commands, right, to insert, query, and whatnot. Um, so that, that is if you have a standalone Java application, right? Uh, if you have instead a, an application that is being hosted inside of a server, right, uh, where, where uh, it's, not a, it's not a Java application that normally would just reside only on your desktop, but instead reside on a remote server, right? Uh, where instead of being a Java application just for you that runs only on your desktop and you're the only one using that Java application, uh, if it's yours, then uh, just running on your desktop, a, a, a one user application, then, then yes, it would typically have that one application making a direct connection to a database, okay? Uh, or if it's instead an application that is part of a larger infrastructure, like for instance part of a server, uh, the more common way to do that is that the server creates the database connections to a database, and then it shares that one co th those connections right with your Java code. Okay, so it would not be your Java code's responsibility uh, to make the database connection. Instead, it would be the infrastructure, right? The server creates the database connections, right? And then it shares it with any, any Java code uh, that is running on the server. Yes? Right? Uh, we're going to explore both ways of doing it. Right? First, the standalone, the standalone Java application connecting directly to a database. Right? Uh, and we're also going to explore the, the, uh, the Java running inside of an infrastructure a way of doing it. So for this second one to work, right? Uh, we need to copy the MySQL connector jar file into Apache's lib directory, right? Uh, so there it is. This is, uh, this is where my Apache is installed. In the lib directory, I copied MySQL connector in there. See that, right? Um, so our first example is not going to use this particular jar file. Right? It's going to use the other one, whereas I think it's in user local lib, okay? Uh, so first we're going to use that library, and then once we understand how to do it uh, standalone, we'll revisit, okay, and instead use this other jar file, right, which is the Tomcat is going to boot up. When it boots up, it's going to create, you know, 30 connections, right, and then it's going to share with everybody who needs a connection. Make sense? Right, and, the, and then just the, the way you grab the connection is a little bit different. That's all it is. Once you have the connection, everything's the same. But, but the way you acquire the connection is a little bit different. Okay. 
Um, okay, so and I, I already have all this set up. Uh, we have um, I have on the user local uh, lib. I've already copied my SQL connector in there, uh, and I've already uh, installed Apache Tomcat under user local. And under there, on the lib directory, I have my SQL connector in there. Yes? OK. All right, so now that we have the, the, uh, the infrastructure, uh, the, the, the files copied in the right place, now we're ready to start uh, uh, using these libraries and start connecting to the uh, database. Uh, we'll have to uh, first uh, in, in, in Eclipse. I, I assume everybody's using uh, Eclipse, uh, but you can also use IntelliJ or, or some you know your favorite uh, Java IDE. Uh, I'm going to document here uh, Eclipse, uh, but IntelliJ has equivalent ways of doing the same exact thing. Uh, from Eclipse, we're going to create uh, a brand new um, um, server. Right, we're gonna we're gonna be uh, telling Eclipse, hey Eclipse, there's this Tomcat server. I want you to be able to run this, uh, start up your your the, the server. Uh, and by the way, I'm gonna host some code in there, right? In that in that server, uh, so you can create a brand new server. Uh, select the uh, version of Tomcat, uh, and you need to tell it where it is. Where is it installed? Right, so you'll navigate down to. Um, You'll navigate down to the home directory of Tomcat where you installed it. Okay. Uh, once you once you have it, and uh, that's what I have here. So I have my uh, little uh, server here. Close all. Stop. So I have here uh, the servers. I only have one server. The uh, 5200 server. Let's uh, create just illustrate here. You can say new uh, other uh, and you can say uh, server uh, server go on and you can say server Tomcat 9 uh, and um, I already have it uh, installed. All right, so once you have the server, uh, you can now create a project that uses that server, right? And let's create a brand new project for this uh, lecture. Let's say new uh, dynamic web project, and we'll call it uh, CS5200, and we'll call it lecture, okay? And then you can point to the server you had created earlier. Uh, that's the name I gave it. And you can say next, next uh, lecture, and we want the web.xml descriptor, which I will cover in a minute. Right? And we'll create a directory called the web contents that is going to allow us to create a simple, uh, well, not necessarily so simple, uh, web web applications uh, based on Java, Java web applications. Right? We'll cover. We'll cover. We'll cover. JavaScript web applications uh, a little later. Okay, we'll say uh, finish. It creates the lecture and there it is, right? And just to verify that indeed this is a, um, a web application, uh, you can, in web content, you can put in a simple HTML file just to make sure that indeed this is running. We can have an index file in there and uh, in there, perhaps we can do a simple um, h1 hello world uh, page. Okay, so we can we can then ask to run that index page on the server. Run as on the server. Save changes. Yes, it says on that server. Yes, and I'll tell it to remember that that is the server I always want to use. And there it is, hello world. Okay, so we have the server is running uh, and it's hosting that one index page. And you'll notice that here uh, on this icon, you can see all the servers that 
are currently uh, running. We only have that one server listening at 8080. And here we can just stop it, stop the server. Or can we restart the server? Everybody okay? All right. Um, okay, I think we're ready to start connecting to the uh, database. All right, so we did that. All right. Before we connect to a database, I think we need a database uh, and some data that we can interact with. All right, so let's do that next.